Collins plays Feed the Beast Monster. Hello, Minecraft fans, it's Collins. We're back with some more Feed the Beast Monster. <laughs> so, I got my uh, filler. Uh, had to make one of those. And I've been playing with some of this stuff. Um, we'll, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second here. But we got extra cells as an add on for applied energistics, and you can do fluids with it. So, we got some fluids in there. And uh, I got most of this figured out. So I have this gray, brown, gray, which is the ender chest colors that I've been using forever. I used it in the last two LPs. And then I got a gray, brown, gray liquid tank. And it's set up on an import bus. If I do this right, it should be able to import multiple liquids. It just does them a little bit at a time. Um, so we got this mob essence in one of these tanks here. And then. I tried using a storage bus with the mob essence bucket in it, it didn't seem to work right. So we just have an export bus. Um, and we're exporting mob essence into here. And I still have to figure some of this stuff out, so I haven't quite gotten it all down. But there's some sewage in there, and then uh, right now it's exporting all the mob essence into the ender, the ender tank. So if the ender tank's full, it'll register mob essence in there. Um, and then there's this fluid crafting chamber. I think you can put recipes in here and get them to craft automatically. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And there's something wrong with the fluid storage monitor because there's no visible face there. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But we got the mob essence and we got this filler. And let's take a look and see what that's all about. So down here I had that little MFR mob grinder thingy. I went ahead and expanded it out and I used the filler because I'm not placing all these blocks, that's what we use the filler for. And one of the cool things about the filler is it'll actually place half slabs um, and it places them, I thought it was going to place them the wrong way, but it doesn't. It places them just like this, normal half slabs, not upside down. Uh, but one of the things I found is with the TE tool, and I imagine you can do this with, that, with the normal one, not the flux and fuse one. You don't need the flux and fuse, but you click on a block and it changes the state of it. In fact, you can even switch stairs around. So we got some stairs over here. You flip them with the little wrench. You can rotate the stairs in all different directions. And that's pretty cool. Um, so I mentioned before the two zombie spawners. So there's one zombie spawner in the MFR thing. There's one zombie spawner in a pretty vanilla mob form over here. This one gives me like liquid XP, which you can shower with. <laughs> you flick this lever and it just drops balls on you. It's kind of neat. Um, I forgot to shut that off. That doesn't really matter too much because they only spawn one away. Um, but the way I set up the mob farm is um, I expanded it all the way out. So this actually the dimensions out here are 16 by 16. So it's in sitting in nice and pretty in one chunk. Um, but I made the walls too thick and that's usually what I do with the mob farm stuff. And um, if we look in here real quick, obviously the zombie spawners thing is working. I got the, the auto spawner on the floor now, and we can look with the wrench, and you can see that all the cabling is all snuck underneath the floor and runs up one side and down the other. We got four grinders in there. Um, this is a 12 by 12 space, so to get the two 5 by 5 grinders to work, what I have to do is actually um, set it up so that it's, uh, I'm going to kill you. Uh, with the 5x5s, five five, the way you got to set it up is you do, um, this is two grinders, so it's 10 blocks, and then I just use these conveyor belts to push the mobs within. So it's a 12x12 12 12 room, but it covers the two grinders with the 10x10 10 10 by using those uh, conveyor belts. And we just pop that back up. So if I'm down here, zombies spawn. If I'm not here, it's a dark room, so normal mobs spawn, and I usually get like a little bit of mob essence. And then I do the same thing over here, set this all back up, run the test rack from the base now. So power comes in off the test rack, items go into the ME system from the ender chest, and then we got these things hooked up again. This is the input chest, and then these are all the safari nets I have, so I can pop a safari net in there. And I did fix it, so now I do get the blaze gas to spawn, and they'll spawn in there. And I briefly mentioned there's a bug before, so if I put my wrench in my hand, or if I have conduit in my hand, I can see through these blocks to adjust everything. Well, um, mobs can see through that block when I got my wrench in my hand also. So you saw the gas down there, you heard him, he's dying. 
so I can get gas tears of sweat. It's kind of cool. And I've been playing with some stuff up here. So one of the things we I kind of did is I tried to eliminate a lot of the torches sitting around. We got a few torches over there, but we got some redstone lamps um, with just switches on the bottom of them over there, and some of them over here, and you know, it's floating around. And the other thing I forgot was I got pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> it's all pretty vanilla, but I got pumpkin lighting down in there. I got it down in here. Pretty much any place that had a block that I could see through, there's pumpkin lighting at the bottom, jack-o'-lantern lighting. So that kind of lights things up without torches, too. These these glow flowers are supposed to emit light, but they're kind of weird. Um, and then these are those purple potion crystals. These give you, you craft these things with like a block of gold and some obsidian and some of these crystals you find in the caves and these purple ones give you XP. So I just kind of stuck them near the enchanting table. They make noise and I put the sound muffler in but it doesn't seem to stop all the noise. You can still hear the little dingy things. Um, but if I'm, you know, I get a little bit of experience when I'm over here enchanting stuff up. I've also been using this thing here, the auto disenchanter to, uh, like if mobs drop armor that's enchanted, I can grab it and stick it up in there. I do it all by hand right now, but, um, and then get the enchants off and turn them into books. So I got a bunch of different enchants on, on books in a box over here. All sorts of different enchants. There's a lot of, you know, these are all vanilla enchants. There's a bunch of new ones that I don't really know much about. Restoration, I'm assuming restores your health. Last stand, apparently if you die, last stand will bring you back to life with some buffs or something. Focus punch makes your punch stronger not sure leapfrog is supposed to do some sort of jump thing uh, but we got all that set up and one of the other things I did since I got my BC filler <laughs> is I got filler and landmarks and stuff like that so I got I got my landmarks with me let's take the tesseract and I've been using this angel block too and um, I mentioned the apiary before so basically what I do with apiary is you just plop them on the ground and take a look at them and if you get any eye out of the way you can see the information from the biome you're in, so normal temperature and normal humidity. And there seems to be a thing where um, in biomes with the higher humidity, plants will grow better, supposedly. And also in biomes with the high elevation, plants will grow. So that's why I've been looking for like a swampish type biome. And do we got anything else we need? We need a power conduit, don't we? And a think yeah that's it um mistcraft i've been running into some weird deals with mistcraft so i got a bottle somewhere over here i got an empty bottle and i can fill it up with water in here and if you saw last time i did this it freaked well there it is it just dis it emptied on me i didn't do anything it just empties but if i switch inventory it won't empty and then so if I don't have that bottle highlighted, it doesn't empty. And then you just combine it with a couple ink sacks. You get your bottle of ink. And that can go in here. And this works similar to the way it did before, but not quite the same. So previously in Mistcraft, you basically just drop three gold dust or pulverized gold or whatever into the mixer. And it would turn green and you can get interlinking. But now it's kind of like a random, it's like a little game. you got to pick it at just the right time. So... I got interlinking disarm, generate platform and disarm, and normal disarm, and I got a bunch of them even with that gold dust did nothing. But I did get a couple interlinking, so let's take a look at this. We got the Bayou Power. So this is a Bayou biome, and it is damp and um, normal temp, and we are up pretty high. We're at 185, and the reason why I picked this elevation, this is pretty much the limit of the jetpack. I can't go any higher with the jetpack. So if I'm down here and I jump with the jetpack, I have just enough to get onto this platform. And that's what we got over here. And I played with the open block sprinkler, just making the grass grow. I didn't see a lot of flowers when I did, did that. Um, and then we got this thing as an open block elevator. And I had dyes on it, but I moved it. So pop down to the next level. I got this all almost all laid out. I've still been working on this. So I got these little decorative windows out of this quite clear glass. Down here in this little hallway is where I'm going to put the sludge boiler. Um, and then maybe put some kind of door right here. And then we got the MFR thing over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some 
adult cows in here and then a breeder that I'll pump weed into and the cows will get sewage and that'll give me uh using the sewer and that'll give me sewage to make a uh, fertilizer out of and then once the breeder goes off the chronotyper will push babies out the back and they'll come over to the other pin and then the other pin has uh, another sewer so it'll get more sewage and then the conveyor belt just brings them within range of this stuff over here and then when the babies grow up the grinder kills them and you can kill them with MFRs um, they have two let's take a look at it, this So MFR, Mine Factory Reloaded, has a, uh, what do we got here, veterinary station, makes them grow up, a rancher. And you can use the rancher and it'll kill adults, but it drops like this meat chunk stuff. Um, but if you use just a grinder, the same one you use for mobs, um, they drop, you know, beef and leather. So we're probably just going to go with a grinder. And I haven't brought the cows over here yet, but yeah. So we got a lot of this quite clear glass. And then we got this stuff here which is uh, applied energetics vibrant quartz glass and you put some glowstone with your quartz glass um, and basically that's a low light source like a block of glowstone but it kind of looks better than glowstone so I got a little bit on the back walls there and some more stuff floating around here I haven't quite gotten this all set up yet but we're mostly done um, I'm still trying to figure out what kind of farm thing I want to do here if I just want to do a jungle tree or if I want to try doing this grass and turn it into biofuel I'm not quite sure yet. But we can pop down here. And then this level's mostly done. This so I'm gonna have different levels for stuff. And this one's basically just gonna have the cows on this level. And then we'll be able to go down. But I haven't set up the next level, so let's take a look at this. Um so it's gonna sit in one chunk, and I got these all set up. So if you have uh, markers and you place them in the sky, usually you just one block around them to catch the marker when it pops off. It seems to work. Otherwise I have to go down and chase my markers. Um, I should be able to click this stuff. And that's all going to link up. Perfect. And I actually wanted it to be... Come on, you. I want some torch there. I want it to be two blocks thick. So that's going to give me two blocks. And then if I place the filler, those markers come off. And you can see with this little three by, or yeah, three by three platform, I get my markers back. And then we need some materials and stuff. So I've been playing with this, uh, um, all the geostrata stuff. So this is the peridot, and I forgot I was going to make this into the um, other bricks. I was going to make them into this fitted, but I didn't. Um, I forgot till after I laid it out. Uh, but we got a bunch of this stuff for the next level. Do I have everything? Yeah, I think so. So if we come down here, and this is on fill mode already. Again, with this version of the filler, you just have the, you cycle through this thing to pick the type of stuff you want. You don't have to do... Um, you don't have to put bricks in the thing anymore. Um, so I should be able to... There we go. I'm not building anything. I'm having this stuff do it for me. So it's going to put two layers of this stuff in. And if I did it right, I have just enough. Perfect. <laughs> and there should be... Give me that stuff back. There should be none left in the filler. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. And then I'll go through here and delete these blocks out of the bottom before. Now let's throw some torches in here. Let's bring this thing up. And just throw some torches in here for now. I'll come back and do something else with the lighting. So now this is all lit up. And the other thing I need to do, which I didn't grab. Um, let's see. Let's go upstairs. So on this elevator thing, as long as there's an air block between it and the next one, you can go up and down with them. And you press jump to go up and shift to go down. And there has to be um, elevators directly above and below on all levels. But I didn't make enough elevators, so let's go make another one. 
And here's another weird bug. For some reason, until I take the glass recipe in and out, it won't craft anything. <laughs> I don't understand. Whatever. So if we jump back over here. Um, and I'll come back and color code these again. And the other thing I got to deal with is my TE pick doesn't work on this stuff because it's GeoStrata. Um, and for some reason, the like this is a Peridot one, it works on the bricks just fine, like on all the GeoStrata ores, but it still doesn't work right on the TE or on the um, on the machines, the uh, Rotorycraft machines. And then that block needs to be gone. And then level, level, down, down. Perfect. Um, and then this is either going to be storage or um, processing or something or fuel generation. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, this is that ender tank that goes into the ME system. And yeah. So I'll go back through and delete this stuff out. These are just blocks to have while I'm building things out. And then I'll put some glass in like I have upstairs. <laughs> this is all glass, so I can't jump, bump out. <laughs> I thought this pattern looked kind of cool, though. It's kind of neat, like that all around. Maybe we'll do a different pattern on the other level. Different pattern, different bricks. Make it all look different. And I've just been stashing stuff in there. Um, and the rest of it goes into my toolbox. And I got the toolbox thing figured out. So I was having the hardest time getting... Like, the universal charger is easy. If you have, like, your jetpack, you just put it in the jetpack, in the universal charger. So if there's a chest next to the universal charger, which this ender pouch is tied to an ender chest that is next to it, that thing charges when I'm in there. Um, the thermal expansion tools, you can see that thing is not charging. Is this full? Yeah, it's full again. Okay, so this thing's not charging when it goes in there. Um, and so the fix I had for that is actually those tools, if I put them into the normal input chest for the sorting system, they're going to go into a buffer chest, and then the buffer chest feeds them into the um, energetic infuser. So you'll see it disappear there. It doesn't show up here for a second, and then it does. So is this one low on power? Maybe we can check that. Watch that real quick. Yep, and then it pops right back in. So it goes through the energetic infuser and then gets stored in here, you, not using AE, but using the um, the all the ender IO pipes. Let's take a look at that real quick. So there's the energetic infuser, and this is going to be kind of, yeah, it's all over the place. Uh, but over here somewhere, <laughs> it's on this purple channel, and the purple channel f takes puts stuff into this ender chest. Um, puts the tools in there. Oh, that doesn't work. The purple channel puts the tools in from the energetic infuser and then there's a different channel, I can't remember what color it was, that puts stuff into the, um, wow, is that, oh, that's not the same as this purple, that's actually like magenta or something? Yeah, it's, it's slightly lighter. Whoa! Great, and I broke it. <laughs> I'll go back and fix that in a second. Um, the other thing that I've been playing with is a lot of the rotary craft stuff. So we got this rotary craft work ta table, and you can't really automate this thing. Like, there's no way to automate putting stuff into getting the work table auto craft for you. But there's a bunch of stuff in rotary craft that uses a normal crafting grid. So, um, I set up the AE system to use this chest as a storage bus for a bunch of items, and then I told taught my ME system how to craft a bunch of stuff. So let's see where we at. We got this thing full. So here's a bunch of components that um, use the normal crafting grid, and I can automate those with AE. But the final craft doesn't work in there. Um, and I'm playing with some of this stuff, so hopefully I have this all right. Let's put these things. I don't need them anymore. I don't need you in my life. Go into my automatic sorting. Um, and then I have this this exposed still because I've still been playing with the buffer. So the storage bus puts these things back for me. Um, so we look at our um, rotary craft. We have to figure out... I wanted to do the bedrock breaker. Uh, so we need a power engine. And I've been thinking about this thing. 
because you can put ethanol crystals into this and I made all those ethanol crystals so I think we can actually make that um, which let's see where are you at where's all the engines at in here there's so much stuff in here this is all rotary craft they have a motor that actually runs off of um, oh here it is They have a motor that actually runs off just RF or MJs or whatever, um, but that seems kind of weird, so I don't really want to do that. So this thing needs, what does this thing need? We need some of these cylinders, so we need two of these. Um, and I have the recipe in here, but we might as well just, oh, it makes two, perfect. And then we need, uh, R doesn't work because I got that selected. We need uh, some of these two times gears. It's going to tell me that. So, so you get the point. And going through all this rotary craft stuff is going to get really grindy. But the main reason why I made a bunch of these components is I have to make them first. Um, and then I can actually tell the storage bus to just store all these things in here. So if I make any of this stuff um, when I'm crafting, it's going to go into this box. And then um, from this box, I can just take all the stuff I need. So I think we need some more of these plates. Uh, what are these things? Base panels. So now I can tell them to craft base panels. And it should stick them in here. There we go. Um, and then do we have everything we need to make this thing? Recipe. I need gold, right? Gold doesn't go in there. Gold nugget. gasoline engine shift click and I have all the components okay so now I got this little gasoline engine and we'll probably need rotorcraft tool and rotorcraft tool number two <laughs> uh, let's take a look at these let's take a look at this bad boy because it looks really cool so you pop him on the ground he looks like a little gasoline motor and supposedly I think he can just put the ethanol crystal straight in here um, yeah load it with ethanol crystals and watch them burn Okay, so now we just have to make sure we can get enough power into him. And that did not disappear. It went into my... It's got that item collector thing. So maybe we'll teach the ME system to store the gasoline engine in here also. Yeah, so as I get more stuff, I'm just going to teach ME to craft all the things they can craft with the ME. And then store all the stuff in this chest. And then this chest is next to my work table. Have I mentioned that this pack may not be ready for prime time? So I mentioned before that the donkey wandered off. I lost the horse. The pigs are gone. I don't know where my speedboat went. I did not leave it anywhere. I checked over at the village because I have linking books at the village. Um, but it's not at the village either. I don't know where that went. Anyhow, I've been playing with this rotary craft stuff. And it gets really grindy and crazy and yeah there's a lot of stuff I'm not really going to show everything on um, one of the things I figured out so this is uh, HSLA steel and you can make tools this says steel pickaxe so to make the actual HSLA steel items you have to actually do it in the work table so in the work table if I do the same combined I get HSLA steel pickaxe. And we might as well do it right since we got the mod. This will be the one we call this will be rotorcraft tool number two. And I got an unbreaking book for it. And a little bit of efficiency. And we won't use that one anymore. The stone one seems... I'm a little worried about breaking stuff with the stone pickaxe. So we're going to use that instead. So, Rotorcraft tool number two is a HSLA steel pickaxe with some enchants on it. So I figured out some of this, this Rotorcraft stuff. Um, so I took my little combustion engine thing over here. Gasoline engine. He's kind of cool. You just throw a little bit of ethanol crystals in him. And he fires up. 
and I hooked him up to this grinder, uh, which has a bunch of canola seeds in there, and then it makes this canola lubricant. So this barrel has a bunch of canola seeds. Well, not a bunch, 400, whatever. It's got some in there. And then you just take a bucket and stick it in there, and you got a bucket of lubricant. And then we can take that downstairs, because I mentioned I didn't really, it feels kind of, kind of cheaty to, <laughs> it feels cheaty to just use my um, redstone flux power and just convert it, but um, I don't know how much better this is. So if we come down here, I got this crazy setup. So this is a, a water mill from Rotorcraft, so it's got lubricant in it. You have to give it lubricant. So I'll just stick another bucket in there. Um, and then this is a dynam dynam dynometer, um, and it basically tells you how much output there is, and it doesn't have to be here, but I did it anyway. And then this is a bevel gear, and you've got to program the bevel gear. And um, it's got all this weird stuff, and this is how you figure it out. And basically, if I flip through these sides, you'll see the gear thing changes, and then just kind of a trial and error thing to figure out that the black side is facing that way. So power comes out of the... the the water mill goes through this thing, which it doesn't lose any power and it doesn't do anything special. It's just there for display. Um, but I made that because it's not too hard to make. And then the bell gear points it down, and then you take your little screwdriver and you flip this guy until he's pointing down, like that. And then the green box is his input, so he'll input from that shaft thing over there. Um, and then this is all set up. I did test it out a little bit, so it looks like it's working. Um, and then what I just did is up here is a water source block. Um, and this is all the way up to the surface, basically. So if I break this dirt out, we should be able to come down here and don't, 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 don't. Okay. So the water should come down, go through this little uh, water mill thing, and start putting out some power. Here we go. And it will slowly use the lubricant. You can see it using the lubricant. But and I don't know, I thought I needed a gearbox, but it looks like this thing's spinning and it chopped, shaved a little bit of bedrock off. Um, I think what I'll do when I get done with this is I'll move it, I'll like put it down here and then I'll move it like a little bit over. Um, basically make a one block deep pit big enough to stick all this stuff in and point this guy sideways. Because I think, if I remember right, flat bedrock is four layers of bedrock. <coughs> And the bedrock breaker cannot break the last layer, so it'll only break three, um, which should actually be the way it'll s work, sitting like that in the air. And I think you just right-click this. I don't know, do I need to have empty hand? And it'll give me some bedrock dust. Left-click, right-click. I don't know, we'll find out when it goes through. So i got to babysit this thing a little bit, I think. I don't know, does it just stop when it runs out of lubricant? Well, it's got two buckets in there, and it hasn't used a whole lot of it, so I guess we'll figure it out. Um, so there's that, and up here I kind of tied it into the ME system, but not really, and we'll have to figure that out too. Um, but it goes, you know, that I got some crafting stuff, and this thing making its deal, and you can put ethanol crystals in. I could have put a bunch more in there, but I didn't want to overdo it. And then I did figure out, these aren't actually that hard to automate, these little fermenter things. So there's one fermenter and you, you put dirt and um, sugar in there and it makes these um, these seeds here and then the way you switch the target mode you don't click on it you have to actually give it a redstone signal so there's a switch there once it's on because if I turn this off it's in the little mode and now it'll make the this stuff uh, the sludge and then the sludge you just cook it so um, I can probably just stick it in one of these wimpy furnaces, <laughs> which I don't use anymore, but it'll work good for that, and that'll make more ethanol crystals. So this is pretty automated. I dump sugar and dirt and um, vines in here, and it just works. The other thing I figured out with the dang vines, I don't know if anybody caught this, 27015 vines. And then if we look at the better barrel, the better barrel says 24,000. So when the better barrel fills up, the ME system stops feeding more vines into it. So it doesn't void pipe the vines because the ME system says, you're full, I'm not going to use you anymore. Kind of silly. 
I don't know, I'll probably need some other bus thing or something. Maybe if I put an export bus on there, it'll um, void pipe the rest. But we have a use for it now, at least. And my mob essence has been filling up because I've been playing up and around out there. And this is where the water is. This wa is the water that goes all the way down <laughs> to the bottom. Um, and I probably didn't have to go this high, but this looks like it's high enough. So now we're breaking bedrock and we're going to make some tools. And I think you're going to work just fine. No gearboxes or anything. Well, I needed this thing here, the bevel gear, but that only turns it from sideways power to up and down power. Um, but I don't need like a, a 4 to 1 ratio gearbox or something like that. It seems to work just fine off of this. Um, and I could have done, you know... Well, this is it's water power. It's almost as cheaty as just tapping into my uh, RF at my base, but whatever, it works. It seems to be doing okay. I don't know how I get stuff out of here though. I think I have to wait. Maybe I have to wait until it stops. Or it might be because I have it facing up like this. Um, I'll play with it. Maybe I'll stick some conduit on it and see if I can get the conduit to extract stuff. Maybe there isn't a way to extract it. And I'm hoping this thing either just shuts off when it runs out or um, whatever. I don't know. So I think I'll wait for this to hit one solid layer and then move the whole thing over. I don't know yet. I'll figure it out. So this thing here, the dyno, dyno, dynometer, <laughs> dynamo, yeah, dynamo, yeah, whatever. <laughs> These little dynamometers. Um, it's basically just made for a readout, so you can input from it and output from it, and it does, there's no loss of power. You don't need to put um, lubricant in it. It's pretty cool. So I just use the second one because when you craft it, you get two of them in the recipe to extend this out. So now we're going to break one layer of bedrock there and one layer of bedrock there and I think we'll create like a little square or something of one block down and then I can face this like horizontal or vertical or I mean I could face it vertical um, and push things out. But it seems to be working. I wasn't able to get the pipes to, to actually like suck stuff out of it. Extract. Always active. Chest. And I don't think it does that. Insert. It says it can receive items from, but I don't think they're going to go into this chest. I think they're just going to land on the ground, which is what these ones did. So I got four pieces of bedrock dust. <laughs> We're working on it now. And then you can use this stuff with more HLCLA steel, and you can make these bedrock shafts, which means that the little boxes you make, the gear boxes and transitions and stuff, you make them out of these shafts, and they're indestructible, and they don't need lubricant. Um, mm hmm. Oh, so four of them with one HSLA steel makes a bedrock ingot. We can do that. Oh, and you can do it with the blast furnace. Okay. Yeah, so we can use that to make that bedrock armor and things like that. I want to do... I, I think we'll do the bedrock jetpack thing. Because I got that um, gasoline engine upstairs. And it seems to be... Uh, it's not too hard to make that fuel especially since I figured out how to automate those fermenters, which is not too hard either. Uh, so we can automate the production of this stuff. In fact, I think I can, I could probably, I can automate all of this stuff, I'm sure. If I can pipe the crystals into this engine, then I'm good. Um, and this is super easy to automate. Um, now this is that remote I.O. reservoir that when you wrench it, automatically feeds water so it automatically feeds water into the pipe which goes to both of these guys and I just did that because this is kind of neat looking like this so one machine take does the um, this stuff and one machine does this stuff um, it just seemed easier to do it with two fermenters so I think we got that going and we can do bedrock stuff and then the other thing I wanted to do I need this and this and these I think um, and some diamonds which I got a few diamonds, so I think we're good. Uh, so, diamond and... is it gold in the corners? And then obsidian on the r around the sides? Yeah. So you can make these infused diamonds. And this is magic crop stuff, so you need gold essence and obsidian essence. We're going to try this out. And then with this, I should be able to make boots. 
diamond boots. And then you take the diamond boots and four of these extreme essences, which are incredibly crazy to make, and then you get diamond boots infused. And uh, I don't know how good they are. They kind of look cool. <laughs> got my little jet pack on. I have the kind of glowy green thing going on. I got my backpack, got my jet pack. Yeah, so these don't seem too bad, but I'm guessing I should be able to enchant them and stuff. Do they just go straight into the enchanting table? And I think, I don't know if these are indestructible or not. Yeah, they just go in the enchanting table, so I can enchant them with that. If not, I got like haste books and stuff in here we can do. I got protection, I got protection four, I got unbreaking three, feather falling. We can put stuff on there. Uh, yeah, so we're starting to get into some rotary craft. We're starting to get some of this stuff automated. It's not as hard as I thought it would be to automate. The gears things was a little weird to figure out. Um, and that bevel gear, until I figured out that you basically click on it with an empty hand and then pick the things. Um, it's not too bad to automate. So we'll, I'll let this thing run down here. We'll get some more of this uh, bedrock dust, and then we can make something cool with it. So you're you're almost done. It told me achievement get. I don't know if that came on camera or not. But once this gets down one more layer, one more shaving of that piece of bedrock, it should be done. And then we can just shut it off and uh, start going sideways in a little bit. Actually, I think I can, well, I got four of these bevel gears. They came four in a, when you in the crafting recipe, so I could probably go bevel gear, bevel gear. Because I want to get this down to where I'm just doing it, you know, horizontal, vertically. It's easier to do it that way than doing this horizontal thing. Um, even though this thing will have to come down. I don't know how I'm going to do it this way, but this water thing is not too bad to do because you're down at bedrock and there's all that space up there. We you know, queried and turtled and everything, so this doesn't seem too bad. I don't think I can automatically eject from this thing though, so. Uh, but I think it stays in the um, bedrock breaker and you just have to, um, you know, click on it whenever you need it. But there we go. We got, uh, we got our rotorcraft thing going and I got sound mufflers everywhere. <laughs> that rotorcraft chest I got upstairs, the um, ME system set up to automatically put whenever I craft the sound muffler to put it in that chest because yeah and it looks like we did shave the layer of bedrock off so I'm gonna go ahead and just shut this off for now um, and then we'll reposition it in some way okay so you're shut off did I mention the blaze spawner? I brought the blaze spawner with the dolly unless I left it in the dolly the whole time I had to put it somewhere so I stuck it in a big thing of dirt <laughs> whatever that works so yeah bedrock armor rotary craft got us some uh, got us a place to put power in the sky I looked there was a place over here that I had marked out that was another um, like swampy type biome but there's a big tain area behind it too so tainted land over there yeah uh, so yeah we got a bunch of stuff going on we're getting ready and uh, now that I got a sp spot in the sky we can go to we can set up stuff over here and have bayou power. <laughs> figure out. I still have to figure out what kind of thing I want to do. I can just do a jungle tree, because um, that easily powers stuff. Um, and then if I get animals in here and start making the fertilizer, one jungle tree would it'll power more than one 36 high pressure boiler. So we'll get big power going over here, um, and that'll work out just good. The other thing is the um, The query, so I figured out, and this is another reason why the Tesseract is not my favorite thing. So the query, I couldn't get it to, like it was sucking all my power out. But if you put an energy cell in between the Tesseract and the query and the conduit, you can tell that the energy cell, you know, max, you know, only input and output so much stuff. So um, I just basically throttle things that way. Where are you at? Where are you at? Energy cell. Yeah, so this guy here, if you put him on the ground right now, he's set up to only put out 500 RF a tick, which keeps it from draining my base. So, yeah, there we go. We got a bunch of stuff going on. 
So we're going to sign off here, and uh, next time we'll have a bunch more stuff automated. And thanks, everybody, for watching, and thanks, everyone, who likes and subscribes. And we'll catch you guys next time.